Thanks, Herb. My name is Chris Atala, and I am president and co-founder of Massive Black. This is Wesley Burt. He is uh, one of our extremely talented senior artists from our San Francisco team. And uh, Wes is just going to go ahead and get started to show you a little bit of his visual history from a digital art standpoint. Don't want to bore you with too much dialogue. So um, while I talk, he's going to show you some of the art that he's created uh, for some clients of ours. Um, but anyway, uh, at Massive Black, we basically just love to create art. And we do this for all media, uh, advertising, film, games, pretty much everything, including our own intellectual property. Now, as we've seen at this conference, more and more of our analog world is being transformed and digitized. Um, you can see this even more so in the entertainment industry, where you go to see uh, a film today, and it's really hard to, to tell what is real and what is not real. So, you know, of course, you can go and pick up that bonus DVD, The Making Of, and see how these guys kind of did it. But I think very few people get the chance to actually see how this stuff is done and how this digital art is created. So that's why we're here today. We are here to show you how we do it, um, hopefully inspire some of the creative side in all of you. And since we are very short on time, we're just going to get down to it. So. This is some of the stuff that uh, Wes has drawn. It's all done in Photoshop. Um, and he does do hand-drawn stuff as well. And we are going to be switching the monitor back and forth between him and myself. Um, I have a, I'm a professional animator by nature, so I have my own personal work that I'll show in just a second, just to give you a visual history of me as well. And then uh, we'll go full bore. So while uh, I switch to mine, Wes is going to just start doodling and drawing some stuff and uh, we'll keep switching back to his and then switch back to mine and you guys will pretty much get what's going on. And uh, later we'll go through some uh, creative problem solving that we do as well. So all of the stuff in this video that you'll see is animations that I created in the past before Massive Black. And it should have audio as well. And it should have audio as well. So, 
you know, how, are, how is that stuff created? Well, I'm going to actually show you in person how we do that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, from how it's animated to what goes into it uh, in about five minutes. So I'm going to try and do everything that you've seen there in five minutes, which is quite the task. But uh, here is uh, where Wes is at. We will check up on him in a second. But uh, as you can see, it's uh, kind of interesting to see somebody create a drawing in Photoshop. You might not have used Photoshop this way before, uh, but these guys are just masters, you know, very good. So we'll check on Wes in five minutes. Um, so what I have here is, I'm sure a lot of people are very familiar with 3D models. So we have a 3D model of one of our intellectual property characters. And uh, if you look at this as a puppet, I know that uh, people here have a good general knowledge of this stuff, but just in case, um, if you look at this as just a puppet, uh, and in old school maybe you know Ray Harryhausen or Clash of the Titans where they do stop motion, it's pretty much the same thing. So you have a puppet that's created in 3D, and then underneath that puppet you will have a digital skeleton that controls that puppet. So it's just like an armature in real life where the people would you know, wrench around this armature to make the thing move, take a snapshot, move it, take a snapshot. It's pretty much the same thing. So then you connect uh, to, that, to that skeleton, you then connect control points to actually move that skeleton around. So if I grab this thing, I can move the arm, right? So anyway, that's enough of the back story on armature, and let's just get going. So this puppet is now connected to that skeleton, and we can move it. So in order to animate it, it's a simple matter of just setting poses and pulling it around. So I'm going to do a quick three-minute animation. It's going to be crazy, incredibly good, <laughs> because everybody knows it only takes five minutes to make an animation. Um, but essentially, you can see I'm just basically pulling stuff around, doing a pose-to-pose -pose type thing, which is, you know, dates all the way back to uh, the historical 2D animation. It's all just essentially pose to pose. And uh, the cool thing about a computer is that it interpolates the in-betweens for you. So typically that's something you hand off to the inexperienced animator to do the in-betweens. But uh, the inexperienced animator here is actually the computer. So that's a cool thing. So yeah, we just set, uh, set a couple poses. Nothing's moving yet, but um, you know it's also the rule of opposites. When your left arm is forward, your right leg is forward. So let's do the, uh, the opposite here, and we will, we should have, if we've done everything right, a beautifully skating animation. Maybe not so beautiful, but hey, give me a break, right? <laughs> But, you know, there's really nothing to it. People think that it's, uh, oh, I don't know how they did that stuff. It's crazy, but it's really not that crazy, you know. Anybody can do this. Um, a monkey could probably do this better than me. But, uh, yeah, I haven't seen that happen yet. But I wouldn't doubt it. So let's see what we got so far. So she is sliding, and that is amazing, right? <laughs> but... As any art, you know that uh, art is always general to specific, right? So Wes starts very generally. He starts with the sketch. I start very generally, just a basic blocking of the motion. I mean, I know that it doesn't look good, but it's about building upon that, you know, building upon it to look good. So, so going back to this, let's see, we're, let's just make it look a tiny bit better. But uh, I'm also, you know, I set a position halfway and I set a position at the end point. There's only two positions in this and it's already looking kind of like it's walking, right? So let's make it look a little bit more like it's walking if, if we're moving here. Then I would just basically lift this leg up. I'm going to move a little quicker here, see if we can... I've never done this before. This is my first try ever animating, so... Just kidding. 
Now also when you take a step, obviously, if your leg is up, then all your weight is going to be over that other leg, right? Same thing over here, all the weight is going to be over this leg. And you'll see that even very rud rudimentary, rough stuff can uh, start to look okay, you know? So when she steps up, I think the body will lift up. I'll do that again. And even a three minute animation can start to look like a walk cycle, you know? Now we also are, uh, if you didn't know, we're constantly <coughs> falling when we walk because we're catching ourselves as we fall. So she would probably be pushed up a little bit. And you know, everything is set on the same key, so it's not, it's not really how, how things go, but it's a, it's a good enough block in, you know, to see the basic motion. Um, you can even do some funny things like, And even that really quick motion kind of adds something, you know? <laughs> so let's check on Wes a little bit. Wes is starting to flesh in his creepy kind of dude. <laughs> and, um, you know, like I said, general to specific is the way to go. And uh, as he starts adding detail, I'm also uh, adding detail on mine. And, um, even with the 30 seconds that I flipped to his, flipping back to mine, I have just done a couple more tweaks. And, uh, no, I'm just kidding, I loaded that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so this literally isn't that much longer than, the, uh, than working on the other one. It's probably like another day. Um, I've done this for a long time, so I'm pretty quick, but uh, but this is something that, you know, anybody can do if they like animation. It's very doable. So the point of this is to show you that it's not really as far-reaching or difficult as you might think. It's just a digital puppet. Same thing as it would be in the real world, but it's now inside the computer. It's never tactile. The only time it becomes tactile is on film. And um, this is actually just put into a film scene and, uh, and lit in a way to make it look like it appears in that scene. And then you have creatures in movies, you know? So that is the blurred line between the two. How do you tell if this is real or not? So moving on from this, we are going to, now that you understand that, I think it's going to be a lot easier for you to understand, say, a film shot. So we have, uh, I'm pushing the gun here for a little bit, so we'll see how much we can get across. So this is a shot that I worked on at uh, Weta Digital for Lord of the Rings Two Towers, Two Towers. And um, yeah, it was a, doesn't look like maybe it's digital, but obviously no human can do that move, even though countless women have come to me and said, can I meet Orlando Bloom? He's an amazing athlete. <laughs> and I just sigh and say, yeah, I had nothing to do with it. And you know, I have a funny story about him actually thanking me for this shot, but. Uh, <laughs> I won't go into it now, no time. So anyway, there's a lot that goes into something like this that you might not realize. So now that you see that something that looks kind of crappy can actually look good in the long run, I'm going to go through some of the, uh, the first blockings that I did for this shot, and, and we'll talk about them, because a lot of this job is creative problem solving, right? So, so this is a uh, first attempt. Like, like you saw with the walk cycle, it's very rudimentary. You can see the, the guy. He doesn't really look like an elf yet. You know, he's just a proxy model. But he's the puppet, right? Um, and I'm trying to figure out how to get him on this horse without it looking too crazy. So, or maybe I should have started more crazy. But, yeah, the thought process behind this is that he's an elf. He's talking with the horse. The horse kind of leans over to him to help him get on. And, yeah, they... They said, uh, no, we don't like that. So I said, sure, no problem. I'll do another one for you guys. And so this one, instead of landing on the horse's foot, he now steps on the, the foot or the spur or the foot of Gimli, the, the dwarf. 
to get on. Again, what I'm trying to do is hide all this action behind the horse so that you don't really see that this is a digital guy, you know? The more you can hide stuff, the better, uh, because, you know, the suspension of disbelief is not lost. Usually they do that in a nighttime scene, you know? That's why all the scary movies you see are always with the monsters at night, because they can hide a much, much more stuff. Well, needless to say, that wasn't good enough, and they said, you suck, go back and try again. <laughs> So I went back and I tried again. And you can see I have many more to go through. But uh, so here's the first one of him going across the horse. I said, okay, fine. Maybe the horse lets him go through the other leg, you know? And he goes up and on. Doesn't look great, but you know, I can make it look a little bit better. And they said, yeah, maybe, but no. So I said, okay, <laughs> fine, whatever you guys say. Uh, that was seven, nine. So now what do we have here? So now he goes across and up and over. Well, I can just say too much crotch on that one, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so let's see. Now, still more crotch, I think. Oh, less crotch because now it's, I'm trying to get him to trajectory back like the horse's momentum swings him back. If you can tell, it's kind of like a very subtle slow motion shot too. So it's pretty interesting to animate too, to say the least. Uh, quite the challenge. So this is kind of more in line. I mean, at least it's a little more active. Uh, it's, it's, quite, it's getting there a little bit. Um, which one was that? Uh, are we on 17? Let's just go to 25. Yep. So this is one from the final animation uh, blocking. So it's more like the momentum of the horse swings him on. It's a little still in the realm of non-believable. I mean, I know the final is not very believable either, but uh, you, know, you, you can only do what you can. They, they wanted a, kind of a Russian Cossacks type acrobatic horse guy, you know? Um, that again is a similar thing. Let's just find out what... Uh, what we got, I think, did I just look at that one? So this one I think is it. So this is what I ended up doing where he kind of hits the horse, bounces around, the, the momentum of the horse carries him up and over. Again, it's not very believable. And actually looking at this one, this is not the final animation because if you notice him swinging around, it's very smooth. And I didn't think if you're actually gonna hit a big creature like a horse, it would be that smooth. So I said, no, 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 this time I'm asking for it back. I wanna change one thing. And uh, so I think you'll notice here, there's like a hit. And also this is the first cloth pass. So they um, do like a cloth cape. It's just a simulation. Someone controls that simulation with, you know, very complicated numbers and stuff like that. But uh, so there's another guy doing the simulation and the hair, the hair is also cloth. And then what you get is, well actually it's really funny because uh, you may not notice because you're looking at the cloth and stuff, but um, on that shot, you can, you can see how much Orlando Bloom helped out with uh, <laughs> the animation. When it starts over, he, the, it was very helpful for him to just jump straight up. <laughs> Thank you. And some poor soul actually has to go in and paint him out, which is very, very cumbersome. So here's a kind of a cool one where it shows the full render of both of them together. And um, I'll show you a little something right there. The hair messed up, right? So uh, that wasn't the final render. And so what we have is the final render. I'm trying to get through this. OK, we're doing good. We're doing good. So what we have is the final render. And um, I'm going to tell you a secret that no one knows. Well, some people know. But how, how do you know when the switch is, you know? Um, it's hard to tell when the switch from the human actor to the digital actor occurs. Well, you know, not really. Because um, if you notice just a, a few things. 
So if you look at this uh, area of his chest, you'll notice that um, there are some bunch of wrinkles in his vest, you know? I don't know if I can make this a little lighter. No. But uh, once he turns, you see all those wrinkles there. They just kind of disappear. Now, if you watch it in full motion, it's really evident, right? Right? So that's the switch. Everything else looks pretty awesome to me. I think it's a successful shot. Uh, I mean, lighting-wise and all that stuff. The animation, I don't know. It'd be great to have another attempt at it, but I don't know. Uh, seems like he got some good attention from it, so maybe I did my job. <laughs> as long as they say it's cool, I did my job, you know? So let's check out Wes again and see how far he's gotten. Looks like he's uh, adding some color. Um, yeah, it's, just always, it's always cool for me to actually see these guys work, too, because... Uh, you know, I, I don't do what he does. We definitely do two different types of work. He's uh, more in the 2D realm, but um, he's done lots of work for, uh, you know, for instance, he designed a lot of the, the Transformers for the Transformers films. Um, he's worked on all three of the Transformers films, G.I. Joe films, along with just many, many others. We have about 300 clients, so we've just got a bevy of cool stuff. Um, obviously, we can't show it all to you and. 20 minutes, but um, feel free to check out the website, you know, shameless plug. And so, um, moving on, I'm going to, I have time, I think, to show you one more. Let me get it queued up here. Might be a little dark, but uh, we'll do our best. So it is a little dark, is it not? Let's see. Maybe it's better to do. Maybe it's better to do something. Okay. Okay, sorry about that. But it is, um, so it's this shot. This one's a little lighter than the other one, but uh, not much. But um, this was a pretty complicated shot as well. Um, I love the challenges, so I always push to get the shots that were the most challenging. Um, as you can see, again, two puppets. That's all it is, setting keyframes, pose to pose. Nothing different than what I showed you with that character walking, right? It's all the exact same way you approach it general to specific. And I'm going to show you exactly how that's done. So we'll go through a little bit of the same thing with the, uh, the, the Lego Legolas shot, where I'll show you kind of the first blockings that I thought might work. Very rudimentary again. Um, you know, timing isn't great. It's just basically, this is what I'm thinking. You know, you want to get something out and show them what you're thinking as soon as possible. So I'm thinking that, you know, the, the spider is, it's a female. Uh, Shelob is her name, and I was thinking, oh, well, you know, she wants to care for this guy. It's her food, and it's a really good, nice morsel. So there would be a motherly aspect since she's a female spider, um, but at the same time, you know, it, it became clear very soon that there should be some aggression, you know. And this was another attempt where the shot right before he gets stung, and he just goes, oh, and like starts falling back. So she either catches him or he hits the dirt. And so I uh, just was messing with him hitting the dirt and her grabbing him real quick. And again, I don't know what it is with the crotch shots, but you know. <laughs> I thought it would be cool to have a dangly foot and my animation supervisor's like, what's, it, what's with you in the crotch shots, you know? Uh, so here we are. It's getting a little more violent, not too much. She kind of pokes him a little bit to see if he's dead or whatever. Um, but still, the timing is a little off. Kind of fun, though. This is a very fun, fun shot to do. She's a, a very big creature in a very small space, so that was a pretty tough challenge as well. So we're getting closer to what it was final, but you can see she's poking him all over the place now. 
and uh, a lot more violent with, with him. But, um, you know, I, I kind of like that aspect. She's a creature, you know, but in the movie, you know, the movie, there, it's very magical, so maybe she can think a little bit more than you would expect um, and treat things differently. So, again, poking him is a little more refined. This looks pretty close to the final animation, if not the final. Let's see. Is that one 52? 51, let's see, 53. Yep, so here is, uh, the, again, the first pass of the cloth. Uh, cloth is very difficult even to simulate because once part of the puppet inter intersects the cloth, uh, the cloth freaks out, you know? So uh, hats off to the cloth guy on this one because he had a very big challenge. I mean, not only do you have to dress the character, you have to do the cloak, and then, uh, believe it or not, the webbing is also done in cloth. So I think this is the first pass at the webbing where it's, uh, he's just basically got a, a receptacle at the, at the back of her that's pulling out cloth, you know? And it's, again, just a simulation. You just have control points to say, follow this control point when I yank it out. And, uh, and then I don't know how he did the rest, but it's amazing. So with this, all you have to do is texture it uh, with an alpha channel, like some transparency and it will start to look more like an actual web. Let's see. That was, I think this should be the transparency. Yep. So this is uh, starting the transparency for the cloth. And then it doesn't look like cloth anymore, you know. Um, but as you can see, all these shots, it's not just one person working on them. It's many, many people. Sometimes 100 people work on one shot, you know, from the people who set up the puppet, to the people who put the armature in the puppet, to the people who animate the puppet, to the cloth simulation guys, to the texture artists, to the compositing people, the list just goes on and on. Rendering, post-production, all that stuff. Uh, it's, it's, I'm just very lucky to have worked with such a, a talented team because, you know, um, it definitely wouldn't look as good with just me doing it by myself. I don't think I would get past the first stage, so. But uh, I'll show you one, one more thing. Where was that final? I think that was. Uh, so I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm not really, uh, I don't consider myself the most religious person uh, in the world for sure. Um, but I definitely think there's some very beautiful art created during some very religious times. And, um, which inspired me for, for this shot. I always think, you know, there's a, a couple things that go through an animator's head, and one of them is, where do I want the viewer's eye to go? So that's the first thing I think about. Well, if you look at this, I'm actually controlling where you look the entire time. From when he falls to, you know, when his arm goes down, that's where you're going to look because there's the motion there more than at another place. So I'm constantly controlling where you're looking, whether you believe it or not. And, um, on that note, I always also try to put in as many subconscious things as possible, not like eat more popcorn or drink more Coke. But, um, but uh, well, you know, you'll never know. No. But, uh, but one of them is that uh, I was very inspired by La Pieta, Michelangelo's La Pieta. I just thought it was really beautiful. And it's kind of the mentality of the mother and the son of the spider and her food. Uh, Maybe weird, but it's... Uh, it's, uh, it's kind of, it's kind of my, my thinking mentality. So if you flip this image, and uh, I don't know if I can flip it, but if you flip this image and you, you scale through this thing, you'll see that I just basically put the, uh, the same pose that he's in, or at least as close as I could get. There was, I had this uh, actually transposed in there and matched it up perfectly for one frame. So it doesn't really make you religious to watch my animation, but what it may do is have invoke a feeling for you that's subconscious. I don't know, you know, it's the artist in me. So let's uh, switch back to Wes and see how he's coming along. Um, I think we are pretty much up on time, so uh, I hope you enjoyed our presentation and that um, you kind of uh, also enjoyed observing how we think digital because this was fast and furious and uh, 
very happy to be here. Thanks very much.